One of the most powerful techniques available to molecular biologists is the polymerase chain reaction, or PCR. Although considered a routine assay, proper understanding of its principles is essential for its successful use in the laboratory. This presentation provides a general overview of the PCR process. PCR was developed by Carey Mullis and first described in the Journal of Science in 1985. This technique rapidly generates a large number of copies of a specific DNA sequence from genomic DNA or from cDNA that's reverse transcribed from messenger RNA. This process is also called amplification. The amplified DNA fragment can be used in many types of subsequent experiments and procedures such as cloning, sequencing, mutagenesis, allelic discrimination, and genetic identification. Essential PCR components include DNA template, either genomic DNA or cDNA, an enzyme called DNA polymerase, the same biological molecule that cells use to make copies of DNA, short pieces of DNA, called primers, that are complementary to the end regions of the DNA fragment or target to be amplified, and nucleoside triphosphates, also called DNTPs, which include the four DNA bases, A, T, C, and G. The polymerase primers, DNA template, and DNTPs are then mixed in a reaction tube along with salts such as magnesium to stabilize the reaction and buffer, usually at pH of around 8.5 to optimize enzyme activity. To amplify a gene of interest, primers, short DNA sequences or oligonucleotides, are designed to bind in a complementary fashion to the end regions of the target sequence. During the PCR process, the reaction components are subjected to many temperature changes. There are generally three steps involved in each PCR cycle. In the first step, called the denaturation step, the reaction is heated to a high temperature, typically about 94 degrees Celsius. At this temperature, the DNA denatures, that is, double-stranded DNA unwinds and the two strands separate into single strands. Next, at the annealing step, the temperature is lowered to allow the primers to anneal to complementary regions on the DNA template. One primer binds to each strand, the sense strand and the antisense strand, and together they flank the target sequence of interest. Once the primers anneal to the template, DNA polymerase molecules attach and begin synthesis of the new strand in the last step called the extension step. The polymerase extends the primers by adding DNTPs, thus creating a strand complementary to the template. In an efficient reaction, at the end of the extension step, there will be twice as many target DNA strands as there were at the beginning of the cycle. Let's look at an animation of the PCR process. We begin with a double-stranded DNA template wishing to amplify a specific target sequence. Once the temperature of the reaction is increased, DNA denaturation or separation into single strands occurs. Next, the reaction is cooled to the annealing temperature at which the forward and reverse primers anneal specifically to the complementary sequences on either side of the target. The DNA polymerase then associates with the target DNA at primer sites and extends the primers, replicating the target, bracketed by the up and downstream primers. The result at the end of the first PCR cycle is twice as many double-stranded DNA molecules as were present at the start. The denaturation, annealing, and extension steps are repeated in the next PCR cycle. Reheating the sample to about 94 degrees Celsius causes the double-stranded DNA molecules to denature once again. Cooling the sample to the primer annealing temperature again permits the primers to anneal. The polymerases then, again, extend the primers, thus generating new double-stranded DNA molecules. This cycling process is repeated about 30 to 40 times, with each cycle of heating and cooling doubling the amount of DNA target in the tube. Typically, the amplified product of these reactions is then loaded and migrated via electrophoresis on a stained agarose gel. 
The samples are compared to molecular weight markers to determine the fragment size. If the amplification reaction is efficient, the amount of target in the reaction tube will double with each PCR cycle. This leads to exponential growth in the amount of target. Thus, after n cycles, the amount of target present in the tube is given by the equation x sub n equals x sub 0 times 2 to the n, where x sub 0 is the starting quantity of DNA target added to the tube. So if you start with one copy of target DNA, after 30 cycles, you will generate 1 billion copies. In theory, the amount of amplification product grows exponentially, doubling with each PCR cycle as long as the reaction is allowed to continue. In practice, however, as the cycling progresses, reaction components are exhausted, causing the amplification rate to slow down and eventually halt. Now let's look at a classic PCR protocol. Typically, a PCR reaction starts with incubation at 95 degrees to activate the polymerase and effectively denature the target DNA. The temperature cycling then begins with a 30-second denaturation step at 95 degrees, followed by an annealing step, which takes place at proper primer annealing temperature for about one minute. Next, the temperature is raised to 72 degrees for one minute to allow extension of the new DNA strands. Historically, an extra minute per kilobase is added to facilitate the extension of very long products. The denaturation, annealing, and extension steps are repeated about 30 to 40 times. A final extension step at 72 degrees for five minutes completes the reaction. This protocol is only a guideline for typical PCR. Successful reactions require careful design of primers as well as adjustment of the cycling conditions and buffer composition for the specific target and primer set. The PCR technique enables a vast number of experiments and analyses. Presently, with the advent of modern buffers, better performing enzymes, and improved instruments, PCR reaction times can be reduced dramatically. In addition, the development of real-time PCR has made it possible to perform quantitative PCR, or qPCR, in which nucleic acids are accurately quantified for use in even more applications, including gene expression analysis.